Finance officers, dealer management, and car dealer owners live in the fear of the consequences of truth. And that actually includes some of the car sales staff, although they aren't the worst of the bunch. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. I'm telling you, friends, the more involved a person is in the daily operation of a dealership, the more running scared they are. It really has to suck to have a career or own a business where you constantly live in fear of the consequences of truth. That's a miserable existence to be sure, Kevin. You know what's really funny? When we first came to YouTube, we were constantly trolled, first by people we worked with who were quite irritated that we were publishing the dealer techniques and sharing car buying secrets with consumers. Right. Then came car sales staff and finance officers from all around the country, many of whom would stop by to make a snarky comment or say, this guy is full of sheet. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why we launched super high intensity training for car buyers. We thought, why not? Dealer affiliates keep saying we we're full of it, so why not have some fun? And fun we did. Super high intensity training for car buyers was born. The point here is why they trolled us. Why they thought commenting, these guys are full of it, was important for them to do. Yes, they were just afraid of the truth getting out. What we didn't know then, but we definitely know now, is that by them coming to our channel to argue with us, they were helping honest car buyers like you find our content easier. The irony is priceless. Attempts to derail our content only helped us. Yes, now more details about the world of fear that finance officers, managers, and dealer owners live in. In a similar fashion, friends, a drug dealer looks warily at their driveway every day in fear of the day the police will arrive. They live in a state of paranoia. Yes, and like the drug dealer, a dealership lives in paranoia of the day the FBI arrives, the Attorney General's office contacts them, or the FTC shows up in response to a complaint. And friends, this happens to be a major reason why using the FTC regulations while at the dealer actually works. To have the FTC come and start asking questions and auditing past files is a nightmare for a dealership. Yes, and focusing on the finance manager while in finance is especially key because he or she recognizes they are out on an island by themselves when that complaint threat hits their desk. Yeah. There's no way the owner wants to get his or her face involved in that point. What the management staff and the finance officer never know is who the dealer owner will make the fall guy when the day of reckoning comes, when sunlight exposes their past car deal misdeeds. Yeah. The old saying about there being no honor among thieves is so true here. One thing every law enforcement agency should know about dealerships is that there is never the case where illegal activity is happening in a dealership without the owner knowing about it. Never and happens. Often, the owner is the very person who drives it. Pro tip right there for you law enforcement types. This, of course, begs the question, if illegal activity is happening in these dealerships, why isn't someone doing something about it? The answer is pretty simple. Many of these agencies are small with limited resources. Dealers count on them being unable to keep tabs on them and not being interested in their daily activities, unless there's a legitimate complaint. It also helps to be aware that dealers, the NADA who advocates for dealers, and many automotive related businesses understand the value of having close relationships with their politicians, which is just another profession highly involved in illegal activity. And so they make very large contributions to campaigns. Politicians help to keep the heat off. Not long ago, we published a story that contained the words jury conviction. The GM in the story was Andy Elliott. And I imagine many of you have noticed that he's a very fit guy. Yeah. He has spent a ton of hours in the gym. Well, why did he do that? Why did he spend all those hours in the gym? Fear. His boss, Chris Mays, also poured himself into the gym. And why again? Also out of fear. A different kind of fear, I imagine. All of this comes out in Andy's court testimony. I can tell you from reading his testimony that the man lived in constant fear. In a moment, we'll take a snippet of Andy Elliott's testimony as he's being questioned by Miss Anderson. Back right after this message from Mary Jo. Hello, I am Mary Jo from the Homework Guy team. Don't Kevin and Elizabeth do a great job? We are so proud of every show our team puts out. Carefully researched for accuracy and designed to help car buyers just like you. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and ring the bell so you get notifications of upcoming shows. Thank you for listening. And by the way, if you haven't already noticed, check out the light pattern on our ceiling. Pretty cool, huh? We're back with this court outline that perfectly depicts what we're talking about. Attorney Miss Anderson is inquiring about Andy's length of employment with Big Red Dealership. Elizabeth will read for Miss Anderson. I'll read for Andy. Miss Anderson asks, 
And then you left in October 2015? Yes, ma'am. And you came back in January 2016? Yes, ma'am. And then you said you worked there until the summer of 2019, is that right? Yes. And well, then what happened? Well, number one, I was stressed out. I wanted to quit for a long time, but I didn't separate from Chris because separating from him is very dangerous. I mean, I went to the gym with him every single day for three or four hours a day just to stay close to him. You're away from him for one day, he'll turn on you. And you know, honestly, I felt threatened, like financially or even physically. So I just, I went to Mexico for a month and then I came back and then I ended up buying cars for a while until I could start my own business. And I tried to stay close to him because I figured this day was coming. This right here is what I mentioned earlier. The dealer owner will just make his staff the fall guy. Miss Anderson continues. And when you came back from Mexico, why did you quit? I quit when I came back. The first thing I heard was that Chris was trying to frame me for a fraudulent warranty repair on a car. Andy was living in fear of the day of reckoning coming. He was fearful for his own safety and financial well-being. Many dealer owners, their management staff, and their finance officers live in the same kind of fear. There's also a huge factor of paranoia present. Here's a bit more of the court testimony that talks about it. They were attempting to listen to an undercover recording collected by the FBI on Andy. Miss Anderson asked this question. Mr. Elliott, the radio seems really loud on this. Why is that? Andy responds, so at this point in time, paranoia in the company was through the roof. Basically, every day, Chris had his office scanned for bugs, for recordings. When I was in the car with her, the first thing I did was crank the radio up and I asked her, do you have your phone on you? Because that's what we were taught to do. That's what Chris taught me to do is do not get caught. So I wanted to make sure, number one, if she was recording me and she was wired, I cranked the radio up. And then, number two, I wanted to make sure she did not have her phone on her. Andy says Chris taught me not to get caught. He didn't teach him to be ethical and honest. Instead, it's don't get caught. Imagine living every day feeling like you have to scan your office for bugs. That's what Chris Mays, the dealer owner, did. Imagine living every day where a friend or coworker wanting to talk to you could be a potential setup because they were wearing a wire to record you undercover for the FBI. That's how Andy Elliott lived. The number one reason a car salesman, a finance officer, and another type of dealer representative comes here on this channel to argue with us is not because we got something wrong. It's entirely because we said something that hit a raw nerve very close to home for them. Like Andy and Chris were, they are fearful of being caught. Seeing videos like ours serves to heighten their state of paranoia. There are two types of people in dealerships, and we can hear from both of them from time to time. For example, there's this guy, Keith Hill, who left two comments. His first reads, you guys make it sound like all finance managers are crooked. My ethics have always been 100%, and I don't appreciate the negativity you are ascribing to people who are just trying to do their job. To which Kevin responded, we make it sound like? Nope, we say it emphatically, don't trust the finance office. That wasn't good enough for Mr. Hill, so he came back to add this. As a former finance manager, please understand that we just have a job to do. There is huge pressure from our managers to bring in as much income to the dealership as possible. It is not an easy job. We need to be treated with respect as well. He had me on a roll at this point, so I said, How does huge pressure to bring in as much income as possible permit a person to be 100% ethical? Yeah. The answer is obvious. It doesn't. I'm quite certain you did a lot of the things the FTC warns consumers about in their new regulations. I'm sure you also sleep better at night being out of that job. Compare that to this viewer, John Vandenberg, who writes, As a former car salesman with over 20 years experience in both sales, F&I, and management, I want to congratulate and thank Kevin Hunter for his great work in saving car buyers thousands of dollars on their new or used cars. Thanks again, Kevin. John, you are either a gem and a very rare breed in the dealership, or you're breathing a sigh of relief that somebody like me has the courage to out this stuff. Yeah. When I say my experiences in the dealership were painful, John, you would likely understand. I had to watch my customers go to the slaughterhouse, which is what I referred to as the finance office, without my help, hoping they would have listened to my coaching and found a way to survive. It was heartbreaking to witness some of the things that happened. I hope you all gained a better understanding today as to why you should use the FTC regs we have on our website as often as possible and never feel sorry for how it makes a dealer feel. Go ahead, be the bad nightmare their paranoia has been telling them will come 
And remember friends, if you want to make sure you don't miss our future shows, you need to subscribe and hit the notification bell. You can also connect with us on Facebook. And if you want more in-depth information, please visit our website, thehomeworkguy.com. A lot of frequently asked questions can be answered on our website. When you get there, scroll down the main page to find tons of free downloads designed to help you get through the process of buying a car without getting ripped off. Lastly, if we've helped you save time and money finding a car, consider leaving a tip to help us help the next person. You'll see a super thanks button just below the video, and there are links for making a tip in the description box. You can easily find them by clicking on the read more button seen below. Thanks everyone. All right, if you're new here at the Homework Guy channel, as Mary Jo said, and Elizabeth just reminded you, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. Join our fast growing group of subscribers and become a part of our YouTube family. Thanks everyone for coming back and to all of our faithful subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. The Homework Guy team is serving truth and justice in the car business. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.